All right, this part of the course is all about how to deal with large amounts of data. So we're going to split it into a couple of sections. The first one's going to focus on printing. The second one's going to look at tables, and then we'll kind of build out from there. But first, let's talk about some printing options. Now, we usually want to do everything on the computer, but there are times when we'll actually want to get this out on paper and hand it to somebody else. There's a couple of useful features you have that are going to make your life a lot easier for this part. I'm going to kind of walk through the main sections. Now you can see all of these in the page layout ribbon. Now the ribbon has you know, like 80% of what you need, but not everything. So we'll kind of talk about some of the major icons and things that are useful here, as well as a few that are hidden behind in the page setup menu as well. I'm gonna go first go to a big piece of data on this sheet over here. Now you can see this is a very large thing. If I go ahead and hit Control P to go to the print menu or Command P if you're on the Mac, you'll see it prints out and there's a lot of pages of stuff here. It's not going to print out very cleanly at all. So you could sit down with a piece of scotch tape and try and mess with it to tape it all together, but there's a couple of things we can do that'll make it a lot easier to deal with. Now the first thing we're going to do is, is we're going to start with the obvious stuff. Usually you don't need to have really thick margins on something, so it makes sense if you're gonna print out a lot of stuff to go ahead and go to narrow margins. Or if you know the exact margins of your printer, go to custom and set them in here as well. Second thing is that usually Excel documents work better if they're printed in landscape form. Generally, the kind of decision-making what-if scenarios will work best in the landscape thing because most of the text is sort of on the side and then you have a whole bunch of numbers to go on the right. Next up, you have obviously the size options. So if you're in an office with a large printer, maybe you can do a bigger statement there. But those are just kind of the basic things that you should be familiar with from Word. The next section though, is getting into the more fun Excel specific stuff. Let's look at the set print area. This is really useful if you've got a table that you want to print, but you have stuff below or above that you don't want to print. So in this example on this page, I already have it as landscape. And when I go to hit the print command, I see that I've got the table here, but I got a lot of other stuff below it. What I'm going to do is select the stuff that I want. Then I'm going to hit print area and set. This makes it so that only the stuff that's currently selected will come out of the printer. Once I'm done, you often will see a new little slightly dark line. It's like a little bit of a gray around your area. And again, it's trying to help you see that you've done something there. Now when I go back by hitting Command P, now you can see I've got, again, less data. Now there is one problem with this though. If you look at my data, you see it right now it prints on two pages, and maybe you really want to get it on one. The simple way of doing this, the old-fashioned way, is just to make your font smaller or try and zoom the columns in together. But fortunately, Excel's got a feature that does that for us. Look up on top where it says Width. Right now it sets the width automatic based off of how many pages it thinks it needs. If you want to force it to go on one page, you can click the one page, and now your printout is always going to be one page wide. And if you look at the print, you'll see it verifies, now it all fits on one page, one of one. Now to make this happen, of course, it's scaling it down, so the font size is a lot smaller. But if you're kind of on the edge, this is a good way of making sure it always prints using the maximum space. We can also do this with height. If I've got a really tall document, I can make it print a one page high, or two pages, or three pages as well. Next up are things like breaks. I'm going to turn off this feature here so I can show you the next piece. Breaks are basically page breaks. Let's say, for example, that I want to have this on the first page and this on the second page. What I can do is come over here and do break and insert. And now you see above my, my cursor, there's a slight gray line here. And when I go to print again, you'll see now I have the first page with the titles over here and the second page with all the data that's below it. So again, that's print breaks. When I don't want that, I just come back here and click on remove, and then it'll take that out for me as well. One other option that's useful is called print titles. Let's say, for example, that I have these printing on a couple different pages. So I'm going to do a page break here, and I'm going to do a page break here as well. And I'm going to set my print area to just print the table right now. So now I've got my printout document. When I print it, I see about the first section here and the second section here. 
Now the problem though is that I don't have any of the titles on the second page. I'll go ahead and delete a couple of columns just so you guys can see a little bit easier what we're dealing with here. So now I'm going to go back into print and you can see it's got less stuff on the right. I might need a tweak over here though. There's actually a scale feature that's kind of hidden away on the Mac. If I go to page setup, you'll see underneath sheet, or I'm sorry, underneath the page that there is an adjustment to automatically scale it. If you've got a PC version, it shows right underneath here. But I'm gonna change it back to change to normal size. That way I'll be able to read the font that I have. I'm gonna hit control P again. Now I can go back in and see my data a little bit easier now. You could even make it even bigger. If I go back into my, my print options, I can make it be even larger, like say make it 200%. Now when I look at my print preview, you can probably have a better, better time actually seeing what's showing up on the top. So now I see I've got the first page up here, but the second page, I have a whole bunch of unlabeled columns. Well, how do I deal with that? Well, the, the not very nice way of doing it is by copying this and then pasting it right below my new page break. Fortunately, Excel's got an easier option for me. What I'm gonna do is go to Page Setup. Under Page Setup, under the Sheet tab, there's this option called Rows to Repeat at Top and Columns to Repeat at Left. What this means is instead of just printing out from here over and down, I can have this, this first row show up each time. So I'm gonna click this. I'm gonna to say to print row five. Again, look at how I click on five right here. So I have the whole row selected. And then just for the fun of it, I'm also gonna repeat the columns too, just to make sure I always have the name showing no matter what. And again, I clicked on A to give me that first column no matter what. Now I'm gonna go ahead and format these with some background color so you can see it a little bit more clearly when I give you the print preview mode. So now when I'm editing, I have the same screen I always have had. But when I go into print mode, you'll see now on the first page, I've got my stuff, it works fine. But now on the second page, before I didn't have this top, this title bar on top, but now I do. And same thing when I go to page three, you'll see on page three, now it's reprinting the first column. Even though it's all the way over on the age column right here, it's giving me this one again so that I know what this is referring to. And similarly for the square that we have right here, it's giving me this first column here and the row over there as well. Now there are a couple other pieces that I think are really handy as well that are hidden away inside a page setup. When I go to page setup, we've already talked about print area, rows to repeat, all that kind of stuff. One thing we haven't talked about yet are headers and footers. It's nice to be able to have a you know page one of one or page one of two kind of thing going on. You can use any of the pre-builds, but I'd like for you to know how to do the custom. Let's click on the custom header here. In the custom header, we've got content on the left, in the middle, and on the right. On the left, we're gonna do a name. In the middle, I'm gonna say page and give it the page number. Now, I don't wanna just type in one because I want the one to change from one to two to three. So I'm gonna use a code. The codes are up here on top. The first code I have here, it lets me change font, but the one I want is the one that says insert page number. Now it's gonna replace the code I have here with whatever the page number actually is. We can also do things like the current date or time. I can have the current date, current time. I could even have total pages and do this option here, which says how many pages are in my document. So now it looks like just text, but whenever Excel gets ready to print this, it's gonna go through and give me just the data that is correct for data, date, time, and pages. For my footer, I could do something else, like I might wanna have the name of the Excel sheet, or I could have the name of the tab, or even I could have a picture. Now that I have these, let me go back into my print preview. Now I can see I've got my name, the current page, and the date, and on the bottom the name of the file and the name of the tab. And as I go through, you'll see now it says page one, page two, page three, page four. It's hard to see because my, my screen's cutting off a little bit here, but I also see there's a total pages and there's also a time printed as well. So one last feature. 
The last one is hidden under the margins. This is called center on page. So when with the square that I have right now, it's always going to be in the upper left corner, but maybe I want it in the middle to make it look a little bit nicer. When I click these center options and go OK, I'm going to go back into print. And now if you notice, I can now see that this block of text, instead of being up in the far corner, is actually in the middle. Now I can read my header and footer more easily and it just looks a little bit nicer as well. So those are the basic options under page setup. We have stuff like is it portrait or landscape, any zooming, how many pages wide to go. We have margin size, centering, headers, footers, and then rows to repeat and columns to repeat. These are the basic print options I want you to be able to do on one of the exams for the class. Go ahead and take a minute now and I would suggest that you download the sample file provided in Moodle and try and apply the formatting.